As more and more kinds of electronic data become available and mix with traditional data entry, the need to reconcile that data becomes more important. If a driver only gives me mileage summaries, well then reconciling is easy. I'll just double check my data entry looking for a typo or an unreasonable number. But what if he gives me more than one kind of data? For example, I have many clients who will give me data that show miles summarized by state, and then every once in a while they'll pepper in an odometer, and then to complicate matters further, sometimes I have to use routing calculations to recreate trips where the original records were lost. Now there's multiple kinds of data to reconcile, and it's not just a matter of looking for a typo anymore. The question an auditor is going to ask is, are all the miles here, or are there gaps? The Gap Spreader tool is designed to help you find and fix these gaps in accordance with the IFTA Audit Manual. What it does is show you if there are gaps, and then if you choose, it will prorate the missing mileage to the jurisdictions based on your existing percentages of travel within the quarter you're recording, just like an auditor should do. You're not required to use this tool, and you should do everything in your power to fill these gaps with real data instead. Think of the gap spreader as a tool of last resort when right before the deadline there's no time or no other way to find the actual missing records and include them with your quarterly filing. So technically, if you use this tool and were audited, the audit should come back with no changes because you already applied the changes an auditor is supposed to make. But be careful. You know your base state best, and not every jurisdiction applies the plan the same way. So we have to warn you here, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution. You have to ask yourself, is this what the auditors I know would do? If it is, great, use the tool. Would your auditors do something else? Well, then maybe you should too. So now, let me show you how to use this tool. First, I recommend you use it only once in a quarter, and I wait until I think I'm ready to e-file before I even look here. When you're ready, you have all your mileage entered in, all your fuel, go ahead and click Other Miles. Once you're here, you'll choose the gap spreader from the drop-down and then the proper quarter. It will tell you right away if there's a gap between the miles and the odometers that you've entered into the system. As you can see, there's a few examples here, but we're going to start by looking at Unit 21 because I just finished the data entry for this guy and it's still fresh in my mind. So Unit 21 calculates fewer miles by the beginning and ending odometer than miles I entered into the system from the driver's summaries. When you see negative numbers like this for gaps, you always want to be careful and look twice at the dates on your odometer in view edit before you spread the gap. If I spread this gap, it will remove miles from jurisdictions because by using the tool, I said the odometer was more trustworthy than the mileage summaries. If that were true, then I might want to remove miles. I mean, maybe the driver had a math error in their summaries, but that's not the case here. In this case, the gap is okay, but I had to use my knowledge of the driver to figure it out. This guy gave me exactly two odometers, the first on October 1st and the second on December 15th, but he had travel after December 15th. In this case, the odometers won't reconcile to the miles, and that will be correct. So I'm going to choose not to use the gap spreader here. Instead, I'll either ignore this gap, or I'll add in an ending odometer on the 31st, because I have the miles from the last trip. That way, there will be no gap. Let's look at another unit, 2014. Sometimes the gap itself might look fishy. If the difference is something ridiculous, you have to ask yourself, is that really a gap or is it more likely a typo? Looking at each example, I think this one is a typo. I mean, how many miles can a truck possibly travel in a quarter? Even with two drivers, each driving 10 hours a day, at 55 miles per hour, for 90 straight days, you're not going to get 100,000 miles. So I'm guessing that there's a typo in the odometer somewhere. Let's do some more math. If I take my beginning odometer of 105.550 and I add the miles, 42.970, and then I add this gap, So that makes me pretty confident that there's a typo in my odometer somewhere and that this is not a gap. So instead of using the gap spreader here, I'll make note of the unit and I'll go into view edit data to fix the typo on that odometer. That's probably just my fingers, but I'll double check with the trip logs I got from this driver anyway, just to be safe. For unit 11, we have a gap showing a difference of just about 100 miles. 
In this case, I had to call the guy. He told me he'd just been driving around his hometown a little bit when he got home at the end of the month, and he hadn't reported those miles to me because he wasn't working. He didn't know he needed to report those miles to me. So I don't want to use the gap spreader here because I want to put the miles in the state where he actually traveled, because I know where he actually traveled, and because that more accurately reflects what happened. If I spread the gap here, I would put Miles in all his states of travel and change his tax liability, and if he's audited, that probably won't hold up. Now finally, this last truck, 2006. This guy has a regular route between Los Angeles and Miami. He always goes the same way, and he always gives me great records, but I have this gap here, and that's really not like him, so I want to figure that out. So I went back through the paper trip logs he returned to me, and there's about 10 days missing. I just never got the trip sheets. So I called him, and he said he had mailed me everything, that if I don't have it, then the records are lost. And he asked me, can't you just fix it? And well, yes, I can, and I have a few choices about how I do that. Option one, I can recreate or re-enter the data from an older trip and hope that it's close enough. But that's a lot of data entry, and it isn't exactly correct. If he's audited, I'll have to explain why I added those trips, and since it's not based in real records, and it's not based in audit standards, an auditor might not like it, and they might do something different. Option 2. I can do what an auditor would do and add prorated miles based on his travel during the quarter. I'll need to do lots of math, and I'll need the reports from the rest of his travel for the quarter. But what if I make a mistake? What if my math isn't perfect, or if I just make a typo? It's all wrong in that case, and in an audit, I'd have to explain my mistakes as well. This is why I like option three. I can just press the gap spreader button. It will do all the math and all the data entry for me with just one click. No typos, no math mistakes, and in no time, it's just done. Remember, the gap spreader does what an auditor should do when the facts just aren't available. Here at Truckee Services, we don't like to alter what the driver tells us because then if that's challenged by an auditor, it's on us. So when my guy asks me to just fix it for him, if I do the same thing an auditor should do, then what's the worst that could happen? Now let's do a variation on this guy's story. Let's say he doesn't have a regular route. What if he was just generally all over the place? How would I fix that gap now? That removes option one, because you can't just recreate the missing 10 days without any records. There's nothing to create them from. Option two has the same problem as before, in that I'll have to do all the math again and all the data entry. And this is where option three really shines, and this is what it was built for. All I have to do is click this button, and boom, the data disappears from this page because there's no longer a gap. To see what happened, we have to go into View Edit Data. Let's sort this by truck, and then quarter. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, we can see where in the description fields, miles were added, and we told you what the percentage was, so that you know exactly how we got to this math. So that's the gap spreader and some examples of when to use it and when to be careful and when not to use it. This really is a tool of last resort. It's better if you can go back to the trip records and find and fix the gaps there, but if you're just out of time or if the records don't exist, this tool will give you a way of resolving those gaps that complies with the IFTIT audit manual. I comply with the plan with one click of a button instead of doing a bunch of math and a bunch more data entry, and I don't open myself up to the possibility of making mistakes. There's a few key points here I want you to remember when deciding if you want to use this tool. First, the gap spreader is always the last resort when reconciling data, and it should be the last thing you do to reconcile your miles. If you find your missing miles after you've used the tool, you should delete the gap spreader entry points from the view edit data screen and reconcile your data without them. Second, remember your fuel. We just added 70,000 miles here. and Your MPG is going to change. Maybe it will look correct, but maybe you need to add some non-tax paid fuel too. The gap spreader does not adjust fuel. Third, you don't have to use this tool. In fact, we didn't use it on three of the four examples we showed you here. We love it, and we think you will too, but it is not required that you find and fix gaps before you submit your quarterly IFTA tax returns for e-filing. And finally, consistency is king. 
If you always deal with discrepancies the same way, it'll be easy to explain what you did if anyone ever asks you. It will also be easy to train your staff what to do in that situation. It's not always possible, right? I mean, nothing is perfect, but we do recommend you make yourself some rules about how your office treats original data from the taxpayer and that you stick to them. And that's it. That's how you use the gap spreader. It's not for every situation, but when you're up against a deadline and you don't have what you need, it sure is nice to know that with the click of one button, you can go forward with confidence. Please don't hesitate to call us with any questions about this tool. Our number is always up here on the top of the website.